You ever get in an elevator with one other person and they just give you the vibe that you don't want to be in the elevator alone with that person? Well, hey, we wanted to create the video game list version of that. And before I even say the title, I just want to say, you're welcome. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, 10 Unsettling Strangers Spotted in Open World Games, Part 2. And number 10 is the Man Bat from Batman Arkham Knight. Let's start off with one of the most infamous open world jump scares of all time. Everybody remembers this one, right? After unlocking Miyagani Island, anytime you grapple onto a rooftop, this guy has a chance of showing up. It comes completely out of nowhere, and nobody's expecting to get surprised rappelling up a roof, so... This monster just suddenly showing its ugly face as you peek over the wall ledge. It's enough to scare the pants off a lot of people. Don't take my word for it. There are literally hundreds of React videos online and none of them still have their pants by the end of this. Go see for yourself. Even if you hate jump scares, you gotta at least respect this one for how surprising and well-crafted it is. The creators of the Batman Arkham games were just so innovative in their open world design. There just isn't anything quite like Arkham City and Arkham Knight that does stuff like this. Uh, for people who are easily spooked, it, it may be for the best that they're the only ones who do it like this. It, especially if you play a whole lot of open world games, if you just constantly come across stuff like this, I imagine you wouldn't be happy with how often your pants are scared off. There's only a man bat in this game though. At number nine is the raving stranger from Assassin's Creed Origins. In this case, it's not the stranger that's the focus of this entry, but rather the quest that they send you on. An interesting thing about this one is that it's not just one person you can talk to, but three, depending on where you are, you'll hear somebody who sounds like a raving lunatic shouting about how the world's in danger and they have news from Thebes. There are literally three different NPCs shouting about this in three different locations, which sounds like overkill to make you notice them, but all these guys can be pretty easy to miss. The open world of Origins is pretty huge. Actually, like, there's a lot of divisive opinions about the size of Origins. So after talking to them, Bayek decides to investigate, which kicks off the quest. What follows is a sort of creepy investigation into a tomb where you find some undead soldiers, which is unusual for this game, but not exactly scary. Things do start getting unsettling when you find someone who was wounded in the vault, who wants you to find a glowing object he left on his camel. You must find my camel and bring back the glowing object. I am certain that it brought the lost army back from the dead. After leaving the tomb and following a glowing light, you find a dead camel surrounded by all these villagers worshipping the object. When you return to the vault, the wounded guy is gone, and when you finally return the object to its place in the vault, you get assaulted by an infinite number of skeletons before Bayek finally passes out. When you wake up, it's in a villager's house who explained that they found you wandering the desert, raving like a madman. Where's the adventurer? And the object? We found only you, muttering about the lost army. It's a bizarre quest that's meant to connect with the upcoming DLC, but it's totally optional, and it's a dark tone and unnerving atmosphere to make it one of the most memorable quests of all time, if you manage to stumble into it. At number 8 is the Ratway Chef from Skyrim. On my first playthrough, this guy scared the living hell out of me. Had no hell in me. There I was just exploring the Ratway Warrens and minding my own business. The second I decided to pick a door and open it, this psychopath screams at me and charges. And you know what? All the hell was no longer in me at this point. Pants were gone too. You know, pardon my French, but f this guy. Also, the blind woman down there too. Her creepy voice is just naming off random things while I'm walking around. <laughs> no, never find me. And I, I'm just gonna say that didn't help things. All right, this is probably one of the best examples of this sort of thing we're talking about in here. A weird NPC that appears out of nowhere and just creeps everyone out. So he's down in this jail deep in the Ratway Warrens, like I said. It's underneath Riften in case you need a little more context. But this guy, I, I call him the chef because I, I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce this. But you find him muttering to himself and inviting you to come closer, which I don't know why anybody decides to do. But if you do, he'll attack with the lines, I'm going to eat well tonight, my darling. I'm gonna eat well tonight, my darling. Enough. Now, he's not particularly dangerous, as evidenced by the fact that he calls you darling. 
I don't know. I guess he could be talking to that lady who's mumbling as well. I'm just going to chalk it up that he's calling you darling. It's funnier that way. But you're also a dragonborn, so it's not like you're not going to crush him, you know? It's just kind of a random insane cannibal deep in these underground tunnels. And it's one of the last things players expect to find. For just one guy, he's got a pretty surprisingly large selection of lines, too. Mostly about how you're a nice fat one and that he won't bite. But I don't know. He gives off the distinct vibe of somebody who's going to bite. And wouldn't you know it, he does. Or tries, at least. Again, this is a guy who calls you darling and also clearly has zero idea as to who he's up against. The whole encounter's small, but really memorable. It, you're going to explore hundreds of miles of dungeons and old sewers and stuff in this game, but there's only one Ratway chef, or whatever the hell his name's supposed to be. And, and that's enough to really spook people who don't see this guy coming. And number seven is the Red Miasmal from Witcher 3. If you don't remember this quest from Witcher 3, there's probably a good reason you don't. It wasn't added to the game until December of 2022 when they gave us the next-gen patch. In The Witcher 3, the various ghouls and monsters that you're going to encounter are just as much characters as the NPCs. Uh, there's so many one-off creatures you'll take on in The Witcher 3. And we've talked about a lot of the creepier ones already, but I think this new creature called the Red Miasmal deserves a pretty special mention. You take this thing on in the quest in the eternal fire shadow which you can start by talking to a young deacon standing outside the devil's pit which is that big mine in velen the place was used to confine victims of a plague called the scarlet fog and there's still lingering spirits or evil energy or whatever and the deacon wants you to purge the place i guess i could do that says Geralt. pretty standard fare but when you go in a strange voice beckons Geralt forward please help me Sounds sincere enough. You soon find that a famous witcher named Reinald was possessed by a strange thing called the Red Miasmal, which has to be exercised to be fully removed from this guy's body. Uh, when you fight this thing, it'll teleport around the room, summon plague zombies. It's a little spooky, but nothing particularly noteworthy. Interesting part though, if it manages to kill you, a unique cutscene will play where the Miasmal now possesses Geralt, putting him under its control just like Reinald. Here's the thing, Reinald was under the control of this creature for hundreds of years and was aware of it the whole time, just not in control of his own body, uh, which sucks. That's a fate way worse than death. Probably one of the most unsettling things in the entire game, actually. I don't know that it got all of the hell out of me, but my pants were off. At number six is the Bloody Ritual Cyber Psycho from Cyberpunk 2077. Most cyber psycho attacks in Cyberpunk play out the same cyber way, but this one's cyber different. An interesting thing about this psycho in particular is that they only show up at night. And when you get there, it's got the usual hallmarks of a cyber psycho. It does have, a, you know, a little added bit of occultism to add to the horror. See how that's stumbling? That uh, proves to you that I am not an AI voice. That's why I do that. Not for any other reason. But the music goes out and all you hear is your character's heavy breathing while you explore the site. It's kind of like you've been hit by negative sanity in a horror game. Uh, after looking around a little, this chromed up freak will suddenly emerge from the coffin or whatever that is at the center of the ritual symbol. And if you try to shoot it, your screen glitches and it'll teleport away and start going nuts on you. This cyber psycho is especially aggressive, and the disorienting visual glitches make the whole thing even freakier. Most other psych attacks don't really even leave much of an impression. But this one sticks with people, and for good cyber reason. And number five is Gary from Fallout 3. Now, Vault 108 is one of the creepiest, most desolate vaults in the game. These underground bunkers are normally pretty unpleasant, but this one in particular stands out for how much of a ruin it is. Like, this place doesn't even have one working terminal in it, and the place is in a complete state of disrepair. For the first few rooms, the vault's just eerie with almost no life remaining, but when you get to the cloning labs, that's when the real horror starts. That's right, you're stuck watching Star Wars Episode II Attack of the Clones, which plays in its entirety in this vault just after the door is locked behind you. <laughs> yeah, I I'm genuinely contemplating actually just leaving this point as is and seeing how many people get mad when they don't find the entire second Star Wars prequel. Yeah, statistically somebody would, but that's not the point. What really happens is you start hearing the word Gary echoing off in the distance. <laughs> Gary! 
scary! But then you're suddenly swarmed by an army of mindless clones that want you dead. It's both ludicrous and kind of terrifying at the same time. There's something unnerving about many of the vaults in Fallout 3 that I just can't shake. I don't know if it's the sickly green glow of the pit boy or what, but few games that aren't really marketed as horror games induce as much paranoia in me as Fallout 3. Like you're already on edge from wandering around a confusingly and weirdly empty vault. Last thing I'm expecting is an entire gang of Gary clones, which while it's happening, that's really the only thing you can assume is that they were cloned from a man named Gary. But as it turns out, that's actually true. You can find a hollow tape that confirms it, but it's actually kind of a perfect mix of both creepy and funny that Fallout does just like nobody else. And while Gary isn't all that talkative, he's still one of the most unsettling strangers I've ever encountered. And number four is the Lady of the Lake in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Some pretty unusual world events in uh, Valhalla to stumble upon. Some of them funny, some of them strange, and there's a rare one that's pretty scary. One of the best of this kind of event is where you find a small lake filled with corpses below a small cottage where you can find an old woman singing an otherworldly song. It's an unnerving scene, but when you try to pursue the woman, she seems almost supernatural. Soon after, her house opens up, and you go inside to investigate, and all you can find is a short little note that says, Three piggies today, five piggies tomorrow. So many lost little pigs, juicy and fat. I'll feast for days. After reading that, the room fills with poison gas, and it turns out you've been mistaken for one of the three little pigs. Now, it's not too hard to escape and go kill the witch while she laughs it up outside, but the whole thing just has a creepy atmosphere about it that works so well in an open world game. In just an any game, this event really wouldn't be a lot to talk about, but something you can just stumble onto, it makes it feel bigger and more important than what it actually is. And number three is Eddie Lowe from Grand Theft Auto 4. Speaking of memorable random encounters, there's a stranger mission in Grand Theft Auto 4 where Nico can unknowingly assist a serial killer in his crimes, and the whole thing is... It is creepy. I think this one is a little bit more of a uh, hell out of you than pants off of you type. And like most of the strangers and freaks you meet out in Grand Theft Auto 4 are mostly harmless. Like they're weirdos you talk to for a few minutes, do something simple with them, and then you move on. But this one's super odd. Right from the start, you know something is bad news here. This guy, he doesn't get the Nico Bellic seal of approval. Let's just say. But for whatever reason, you help him anyway, because there's no such thing as a Grand Theft Auto protagonist that can say no. Uh, particularly if you go back to Grand Theft Auto 3, where the guy can't talk. But you drive out to the docks with him and dump a body. Entire time you're, you're in the car, he's just listening to this guy ramble. And he's very clearly a sicko, not even trying to hide the fact that he's a serial killer. <laughs> you're funny. You're a real joker. I knew a joker once. Lovely guy. Came to a rather unfortunate end, though. But I suppose we all do. In the end. Okay. But Nico keeps driving like it's not a big thing. Next time you meet him, he starts to flip out and tries to attack you with a knife. He dies as quickly as everybody else, but his short few minutes of screen time are so creepy and so unexpected, they often stand out in people's minds. And number two is the strange man from Red Dead Redemption 2. One of the most mysterious NPCs in the Red Dead games is the strange man, this well-dressed man who appears in various places in the original Red Dead Redemption to talk to John Marston. Is he a man who was wronged by John in the past or is he something more supernatural? Never explicitly said, though his final appearance in the first Red Dead game confirms there's more to him than meets the eye. He's a little more existentially unsettling in the first Red Dead game, but his sequel appearance is a lot more shocking. Down in Lemoyne, you can find this weird abandoned shack that looks like a, a dump from outside. But the interior is actually pretty lavish. It's decorated pretty nice. It's got multiple paintings. Most noteworthy thing here is this unfinished painting in the center of the room. What's unusual about it, every time you go to this place, depending on your progress in the game, the painting's going to be more and more complete. Now, the finished painting doesn't show up until you show up as John Marston in the epilogue, where it's revealed to be a portrait of the strange man. That wouldn't be enough to warrant an entry on this list, but the real surprise happens when you turn around and look in the mirror and see the strange man just standing behind you. If you try to turn around or take a picture, he just disappears, and that's the only time he ever appears in the game. It's absolutely chilling, a, a masterful trick pulled off by Rockstar. And finally is Hayata from Elden Ring. Almost every stranger you meet in Elden Ring is unsettling for one reason or another, right? I mean, you're, you're in the lands between 
kind of a split up territory ruled by several demigods. Not exactly a pleasant sounding place, but pretty much everybody there is more messed up than they seem to appear. Uh, that said, there is no other character as viscerally unsettling as Hyetta in Elden Ring. The thing about her is that at least when you first meet her, she seems pretty normal. Just another traveling NPC that needs your help. She's even blind, so that earns her some sympathy points. All she asks is for you to find these things called Shibiri Grapes. It sounds like anything that any NPC in any game might want. Kind of a goofy name, but like, that's how games are, right? That said, it's kind of odd these grapes make it so she feels a distant light in the back of her eyes, but whatever. That doesn't really sound that weird in terms of Elden Ring stuff. Then you actually get one of her quote-unquote grapes and take a look at it. it. It's not a fruit. Listen to the description. A yellowing, oozing eyeball of the infirm. Sounds delicious, eh? That's when you get to thinking, oh, wait a second, wasn't there another blind girl you could find near the start of the game? That's a weird coincidence. Oh, wait, they actually looked exactly the same. Huh, game just never said anything about them. The first blind girl, Irina, was dead. Now suddenly she's back and has a completely different personality? Huh. Everything about this character is creepy as hell, especially when they describe going to villages and people resting trembling infirm hands on her and offering her their grapes. Are all those people afflicted by like the frenzied flame? They're ripping out their own eyeballs and giving them to this girl so she can eat them? That's, uh, that's, that's odd. When you straight up tell her, oh yeah, those are actually human eyes. She acts pretty disgusted at first, but when you come back, she's totally cool with it. Yeah, normal behavior, right? What makes it all so creepy is just how matter of fact it all is, while still being pretty easy to miss. It's really only scratching the surface with this entry, but it's probably for the best we don't go too deep down the lore hole. We want to keep the hell in us for now and our pants on, right? I mean, we're at the end. What do you want? Boo. Scared you? I didn't think so. That's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time, right here on Game Ranks.